Saturated fats are found ubiquitously in foods from butter to meat to palm oils and beyond. So it stands to reason to want to know if the foods we're consuming are causing issues for our body. In this series, I'd like to focus our attention on saturated fats, unsaturated fats, and their impact on insulin resistance with a focus on the effects on the pancreas, the organ that produces the insulin our body utilizes to control our blood sugar levels and more. So in this video, I'll show you some data from two studies that investigated the impact of these various fats on pancreatic health through cell isolation studies. And from there, we'll also have the pleasure of seeing data looking at the effects in humans consuming diets high in these fats. Without further ado, let's zoom into our pancreas. As I briefly mentioned, the pancreas is an organ in our body that is responsible for the production of insulin. When the pancreas is activated, it will release insulin into the bloodstream. And from there, these insulin molecules will bind the various tissues of our body, activating them in turn to allow blood sugar into the tissues, removing it from the bloodstream. That's a standard scenario. Now, while we can focus in on the effects in the peripheral tissues like the skeletal muscles, the kidneys, the heart, and more, we're going to look straight at the source of the insulin production, the pancreas. We'll do that by dissecting two studies, both of which, if you're interested, I have detailed analyses where you can get, well, more details that I won't have time to cover here. The researchers of these studies took a variety of pancreatic cells in isolation and exposed them to the saturated fats palmitate, stearate, as well as monounsaturated fats oleate, palmitoleate, and the polyunsaturated fat linoleate. In both studies, they used rat pancreatic cells as a proxy for human cells, but one of the studies also tested some of the results in human pancreatic cells, so we'll get a mixture of results. That's basically the study design, expose pancreatic cells to different fat conditions and measure. So what happened? Well, this first piece of data shows the amount of cell death, specifically apoptosis, which is a type of cell death that occurs under each condition. The horizontal axis indicates the level of glucose or sugar in the cellular environment at the time of testing. So G5 is 5 millimole, G11 is 11 millimole, and G20 is 20 millimole, which equates to normal physiological blood sugar levels, diabetic physiological sugar levels, and the last one is off the charts. Then they have five conditions. Control, wherein the pancreatic cells were not exposed to the fats, just the sugar indicated, then the saturated fat palmitate, stearate, and the monounsaturated fat oleate, and the polyunsaturated fat linoleate. The vertical axis indicates the amount of cell death by apoptosis. Hopefully you're following me here. Uh, what do we see? We see that in the physiological glucose, the five millimole levels, which translates to 90 milligrams per deciliter in the blood, there is no significant effect of any condition. So adding palmitate plus glucose had no negative effect. However, we go up to the more diabetic-like conditions, the 11 millimole, which is just under 200 milligrams per deciliter in the blood, and the combination with either saturated fat led to significant pancreatic cell death. The same was not true for either of the unsaturated fats. So something interesting, although difficult to translate to the real world, is the astoundingly high glucose condition, which not only showed cell death with the saturated fat conditions, but also with the polyunsaturated fat linoleate. But the monounsaturated fat remains completely stable. This data tells us that these pancreatic cells are stressed under a high physiological glucose and the simultaneous exposure to saturated fat, however, not to unsaturated fat. The results are consistent with measures in human pancreatic cells, as measured by another cell death experiment showing increased genetic damage to the cells in a high sugar environment only when palmitate is present. There is an inconsistency here in that the measure is only shown with the super high concentration of sugar. Still, the sugar alone, even in astounding concentrations, has no negative effect. 
Only when the saturated fat palmitate is added to the mix do we see greater DNA or gene damage in the pancreatic cells. Okay, so that's two pieces of data from the first study, but do we find similar results in the second study? And are there other measures that we can also look into? So the second study also followed a similar reasoning by incubating the pancreatic cells in various concentrations of sugar. In this case, 5.5, 11.1, and 33.3 millimoles. This is the same cell death by DNA damage experiment that we looked at with the first study, but the second study showed a slight inconsistency in the data. Can you see it? Well, the sugar concentrations are quite close when looking at the lowest and middle concentrations. The first study used 5 millimole, or 90 milligrams per deciliter, and this study uses 5.5 millimole, or 99 milligrams per deciliter. However, the first study showed no significant effect from palmitate, and here we see significant increase in cell death markers. So, why is that? I'm only speculating here, but there are a number of possibilities. Uh, one, the first study used smaller concentrations of the saturated fat palmitate. Two, the second study is using a slightly higher sugar concentration, which is borderline pre-diabetic. It's possible that somewhere between 5 and 5.5 is the threshold for cell death effect, or a combination of the two reasons, or something else. Like I said, there are only guesses. In the end, this second study largely follows the same results as the first, although it may indicate that the amount of saturated fat exposure or glucose sugar exposure may be vital. Another fascinating phenomenon is the combination of the saturated fat plus palmitoleate, an unsaturated fat. The combination eliminates all the cell death that occurred through palmitate. This implies a protective effect of unsaturated fat from the negative effects of saturated fat. Intriguing. One last measure from this paper, as I said, if you want a more detailed breakdown uh, and you have the time for it, you have public access to my detailed analyses uh, of both studies. Let's look at some functional outcomes, so insulin secretion from these pancreatic cells. The researchers are using the same conditions, focusing on palmitate as their saturated fat and palmitoleate as their unsaturated fat. Then they are stimulating the pancreatic cells to secrete insulin or measuring their insulin secretion at basal levels, or unstimulated. The higher the bar, the more insulin was secreted. While all the conditions had the same basal levels of insulin secretion, that makes sense because the cells aren't being activated to release insulin, yet when the cells are stimulated, you can see that the palmitate exposed cells have a dampened response compared to the control, non-exposed cells, and especially when compared to the unsaturated fat treated cells. And again, we see a recovery of the insulin secretion abilities of the cells if they are exposed to both fats simultaneously. Usually I'd go into the explanation of why the cells are dying or why the insulin secretion is different between fats, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave that for separate content because people usually check out mentally if I go into too much depth in these shorter videos. But ultimately, you probably want to know two things. One, do these results actually translate to serious damage to the pancreas? And two, are these effects translatable? Do saturated fats really have negative effects in relation to insulin resistance? My educated opinion is that saturated fats don't come out of this looking too good, but I wouldn't jump to any conclusions that they're literally killing millions of your cells. Keep in mind, these are exaggerated circumstances. The cells are doused in saturated fat, which leads to significant cell stress. That's as general as I can be without getting into too much of the mechanisms. So I'd say that they cause cell stress, yes, but not to the degree outlined here. Second, do these effects persist in actual living human beings? Well, for that, my friend, we'll need to delve into six studies that attempt to answer that very question. If you're along for the ride, let's jump into the next video of our series on the saturated fat and insulin resistance. Speak to you there. Mm -hmm.